The case of Zaire Wade is a unique one. As you can expect, the child prodigy giving buckets to everyone he sees while being a spitting image of an NBA legend in Dwayne Wade was must-see television. And upon teaming up with Bronny James at Sierra Canyon built hype that the second coming of one of the most memorable duos in basketball history was forming in Los Angeles. The world was really there for the taking if Zaire was willing to grab it. Living the life that every player dreams of, with basketball stardom from the start garnering millions of eyes to 5th grade basketball games, soaring through the basketball rankings, and playing on some of the best teams the country has to offer. The fame, fortune, and the legacy that comes with playing the game at the highest level was all but a guarantee. Seeing Zaire Wade's name in the brightest lights should be a reality. But as of right now, when you look around, the second coming of the Flash is nowhere to be seen. Hell, he's not even playing on this continent anymore. To go from one of the most hyped young prospects that the game has to offer, to off the face of the earth while rocking one of the most respected names in basketball history on your back, is a collapse that nobody expected to see. There's something going on with Zaire Wade. Around the time that the big three started emerging as the hottest thing in the basketball world, Zaire Wade first began bursting into the basketball scene. At what was kind of the start of the mixtape culture we've come to know and uh, sorta of love, Zaire Wade was quickly becoming a mainstay in the basketball community. Zaire was certainly another case of growing up with a camera right along with you, as he grew up balling out at all lower levels of basketball, drawing eyeballs from every which way. Not only did this dude look exactly like a little D Wade, but a two guard who could get to the tin, facilitate and rifle shots from the mid range showed he took a lot from the driveway sessions as well. Zaire came into his high school year with quite a bit of weight on his shoulders, which is crazy to say for someone who can't even drive a car yet. But that's the reality that comes with being a very young kid with a very big name. But upon entering American Heritage High School his sophomore year, Zaire had a bit of promise to him. He began to develop out of being the young kid on YouTube into what looked like a legitimate college prospect, even gaining an offer from Nebraska despite not being the top 100 players in the country. There were some clear pros of his game. The kid may not quite have had the quickness of his dad yet, but they called him the Flash for a reason. Zaire's quickness was definitely the main draw to his game, with some moderate explosiveness around the basket to pair. The highlights of the fancy passes, the isolations into pull-ups, and fast breaks over the rim finishes kept his name in the news cycle and for the most part looks like your typical pace for a division one collegiate player. Zaire's story really started to come off the beaten path upon transferring to Sierra Canyon his senior year to team up with Bronny James on one of the best programs in the country. This is unfortunately when the Zaire hype train became a little less of a sure thing. After an unfortunate ankle injury sidelining in much of the season, Zaire would average 4 points a game in just 3 games played for Sierra Canyon. This is when Dwayne Wade would step in to badmouth a coach in support of his son, angry at the lack of playing time he was getting on the team. But as a three-star player on a team loaded with five stars like Brandon Boston and Amari Bailey playing above him, it's fair to say that he did not earn the playing time that he wanted, and as a result extended his high school career, surprisingly transferring to Brewster Academy where he could take back control of his team. With the opportunity on a silver platter to prove himself as a top collegiate prospect, Zaire Wade would only gain a few Division I offers during his super senior year from mid major schools. In what would again become a major mistake in his developmental path, Zaire would forego his college eligibility to enter the G League after high school after his dad gained part ownership of the team. And oh my god was this a train wreck. Averaging under 2 points a game on 26% shooting and 18% from 3 in 19 minutes a game. Holy hell, does Zaire suck, man. It became clear that this kid was nowhere near NBA ready. And it doesn't take a genius to see that there's a clear developmental issue in his game. Despite having unreal genetics, Zaire is nowhere near close to fully utilizing him. There are major holes in his game, and honestly, when comparing him to the professionals that he chose to play against, there's really not even that many strengths. Skill-wise, Zaire is still very raw, and although with the genetic lottery that he hit, his craft is really not that impressive. He may have a few fancy isolation moves, but going downhill with no real right hand and lacking the physical frame to take contact around the basket, his ability to utilize his greatest attribute, which should be getting to the tin, is greatly limited. He doesn't have the frame that his dad did, even with him being an undersized two-guard at that, 
which is going to inhibit his ability to match up at the next level on both ends of the ball. And as we've seen in the G League, he gets totally eaten alive both ways. Zaire is going to have to play the point guard position at whatever pro level he plays at, and at this point, it's hard to assume that he's going to be capable of that. He's never been a consistent player, and it's clear to see why. When you're gaining recognition for your over-the-top flashy plays from the time you pick up a ball, working on tightening up your handle to push in transition is just an afterthought. Who cares about working on finishing going both ways when that dunk you just threw down got like 10 million views? The flashy play has always taken priority over the right play, and that's not going to cut it when you're an undersized point guard who can't shoot the three ball or match up with anyone at this level. Zaire became the victim of being told that you're great when you really never were, and if he wasn't subject to the nepotism of being a Wade, it's safe to say that he would have developed differently. Dwayne Wade himself made it clear that he was going to help Zaire make it to the top one way or another, and as we've seen so far, his guidance for his developmental path has been kinda awful. Sure, it was fun to team up your kid with your best friend's son, but wasting a full season of his developmental years just to take a cute Instagram picture sure as hell didn't help him get to the league any quicker. I'm sure if he just stuck to the route that got him noticed by colleges in the first place, we'd be in a whole different scenario. I'm sure he had all the right intentions, but foregoing his college years, that really would be crucial for where this kid's game is at right now to put him on your team that he clearly does not deserve to be on was a detrimental move for his future. Because in a structured team for four years, I think it's totally possible they could start to really dig into that untapped potential. Especially given that D. Wade was outside of the top 100 in his high school class before blossoming into one of the best players in college basketball. But I guess we forgot about that. As we sit right now, Zaire Wade is currently playing for the Cape Town Tigers in the African Basketball League, where his name is nowhere near an NBA draft board. At this point in time, Zaire's window for making the NBA might just be up. And the primary reason is the kid just isn't that great. With his own clothing brand and whatever other ventures he can latch onto, the best course of action frankly might be to take on some other avenues because banking on getting another shot in the G League after playing overseas to maybe have a shot in the league is a step back, even compared to where he was just a few years ago. At 22 years old, nothing is impossible if he makes monumental improvements, but every tick on the clock, the NBA dream seems to get further and further away. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. Make sure to check out my last video here if you missed it, and I'll see you boys in the next one. Peace out.